All right, um, so today's webinar is on our common X-Form routines. These are also known as move by value. Uh, X-Form routines in general are going to translate or rotate components or for some routines, individual points within components. Um, that amount that we are gonna translate or rotate can either be a constant value or it can be taken from a measured value. So as you're running your simulation and you have different builds with different values, um, that value can update according to um, just your deviations and everything else that's going on in the model. Um, extra routines are gonna allow for more advanced modeling beyond just your common three, two, one um, step plane, six plane move. So, if you ever come to a point where you think the six plane is just not um, gonna be accurate enough for your parts, chances are X-form routines uh, will get the level accuracy that you require. Um, there's gonna be a broad range of applications for these routines. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep it simple with just basic examples. Um, so if you have a question as far as whether your model is an applicable case for an X-form routine, uh, chances are the answer is yes. So again, these routines are just intended to extend the functionality of 3DCS beyond um, kind of the basics. Um, X-form routines come with every install of 3DCS. There is no separate license required. Um, I'll show you where those are located in a minute. Hopefully with your uh, install, they're easy to find. Otherwise, um, based off of your company's, you know, kind of installation requirements, they just may uh, be at a different location that you have to search for. Now, there's over 30 different routines um, in this XForm DLL. Uh, I'm going to cover what I feel are kind of the most frequently used routines. Um, so, if you are looking for an explanation on every single routine within the XForm DLL, um, you'll want to check the help manual. Uh, and then I'll be using V5 for today's demonstration, but the application and process will be the same for all 3DCS platforms. As a note on that, I'll be taking the section of the help manual that goes through them in brief and converting it to PDF and including that in tomorrow's email, just so you can get a, uh, a quick look at the different um, routines that are available in the DLL. Uh, so the first step before we even get to using the XForm routines is to make sure that we've included the DLL in our library. So if you're not familiar with DLLs, um, they're just additional functionality that didn't quite make it into, um, say, the full list of moves, tolerances, or measures. So to add the XForm DLL or any DLL, you're going to go to your um, DLL library. So within the software, that is going to be this icon here, user DLL, uh, depending on the platform you're in, um, maybe in a different location. So NX, Creo, Multicad with your ribbon across the top. It's going to be that same icon. So when you select that button, you'll see any installed DLLs in your list here. I currently do not have any, so I'm going to say add DLL, and then it will hopefully take you to the default install location. Again, if this is not um, showing you any DLLs, you'll just have to do a little searching. Um, but for most applications or most installs, the default location is going to be your C, program files, DCS, then whatever version you're using. Um, NX v5, CATIA, um, and then the add-ins folder. So that takes you to this location, and the XForm DLL is actually in this extra DLLs folder, and if you're sorted alphabetically, it's at the bottom. So we want this DCU underscore XForm MV.DLL. So once I add that to my library, I'm now going to have access to all the routines that are included within this DLL. Uh, 
And then uh, I'll just mention too that you can even write your own DLLs if you are familiar with um, coding. And uh, if you find that the functionality that we have currently is not helping, or if you have little tweaks that you wanna make that would just help expedite your process, um, you can write your own DLL. And then if you include that, you'll use that within your 3DCS model. Just to comment, a lot of times I use a routine out of the X form DLL in combination with the measure equation DLL to do some pretty uh, complex model simulations. Um, so now that we've added our X form DLL to our library, we can start to use the routines within it. Um, so the first routine that I'm going to go through is the uh, translate by value. So when we are going to create a DLL move or tolerance or measure, um, we're just going to add the DLL type in our dropdown list. And then within that dialog, we will select the specific routine that we're trying to use. So for this first example, we're going to use translate by value. And all it's going to do is move apart along a direction by a specified value. And to uh, have this move correctly, we just need a direction for the translation, a part to move, and an amount that we want to translate. So for my example, I just have this basic shock. So right now I have a two-point move that builds with the piston moving all the way into the cylinder. So if we wanted to see how far or how it looks when it extends by a certain amount, we can then use the translate by value DLL. So I will go into my moves list, add my user DLL move, uh, and then I'm just going to give this a name and say translate by value. Um, one mistake that's pretty common, I still make it, is to forget to select your routine. So in this case, I want translate by value. Now, we don't need any object or target features, um, but sometimes you can still add these, even if they're not being utilized within the move. And what this will do is it will actually show you uh, the label for the move name. So I'm just going to skip that for now and come back to that in a second. And the only thing target features is used for is if you have associated directions in your direction list. Yes, good point. So uh, I'm not going to use the associated direction, but if you want to, you would need to include that uh, feature within this target feature list. Um, so by default, your direction number is going to be zero. You just have to enter in one, hit enter, and that will give you your um, direction. Because I want to translate just along the um, axis, I'm going to say two point and go from my point two to point one. This direction is important because a positive value will move in that direction. So in this case, approximately Y. If I were to switch this direction, it would reverse how that translates. Uh, and then I need to tell the software what part's going to move. So I'm going to say add the move part. Real quick, <clears throat> this move you're adding, are you going to be assembling the, the piston into the, the rod into the piston and then moving it out a yes. little bit? So this would just kind of be simulating um, extending the piston out of the cylinder. Right. So I already have a two-point move that builds the piston fully compressed into the cylinder. So we're not replacing that move. Right. We're so using that as initial setup. I'll show you once the move is complete what the two steps look like. So the last thing that we need to add is just a value to translate along. So if you go to more, then I need to specify a one constant. So type in one there. That gives me just one constant index. And in this case, I'm going to translate this 70 millimeters. So that is all I need to translate by value. So if I say apply, and then we can see through the animation, first my two-point move, 
and then my 70 millimeter translation along that axis. Uh, I mentioned before that if you don't put any features in, your label, at least in V5, will just kind of be at 0, 0, 0 in space. That's because we don't have any features to reference or to locate this label to. Um, so I usually find it's a good practice to just include um, an object and target feature, even if they're not being used. So that way, when I am looking at this move, I now have my label shown on the part that's actually moving. So again, for this routine, these features not necessarily being moved, if you want to use associated direction, then it will use the um, target feature. If you don't want associated direction, you don't need these features. But if you don't have these features, that label will not show up on uh, any part in particular. It will just be at zero, zero in space. So that is translate by value. The next uh, routine I'm going to look at is rotate by value. Um, so similarly, this is just going to rotate a part instead of translating a part. The only difference now is that we're going to need a feature to define the center of rotation. 